Hey folks, welcome back. This video is about risers for 3D printers. More precisely about a model that is available for a large number of enclosed 3D printers. It is called the D3P riser system and is probably one of the best printable upgrades that I have ever done. If you have an enclosed printer, chances are that you want to build one. Because most of these printers suffer from the same problems. There is the PTFE tube rubbing against the upper plate, an AMS that you want to place on top, but there it gets in the way. If you need access from above, for example because you want to print TPU, which is usually not possible with these printers, it does not pass through the TPFE tube and you would have to feed it from above. Also many of these printers lack sufficient light in the build chamber, so we're gonna take a look how to install an LED strip. For filaments that require a lot of cooling, there are three adjustable ventilation slots at the top. And if that's not enough, the top plate can also be moved up. Or you can just leave the door open, you don't need a riser for that. But there are drawers and external toolboxes, extension shelves in all shapes and sizes, a spool holder that lets you print TPU. We'll take a closer look at that. And with that we can print the gasket that I designed that upgrades this riser upgrade even more, which is pretty cool. All accessories are free to download, but the base model costs about $10. Actually, I think the price is fair. I mean, you get a lot of riser for the cost of a half spool of PLA. I made this video to help you decide whether it's worth it for you. There are a lot of free risers available to download, so this one must be really good, right? That and much more, including tips and tricks you can also use with other risers, after a quick shout out to my longtime sponsor, PCBWay.com. Because no matter which riser you choose in the end, there will always be materials that you cannot print yourself. You don't have to buy the most expensive printer or a CNC milling machine. Instead, you can simply upload your part to PCBWay.com, select the desired material and quantity, and with that done, you get an instant quote. Not only for PCBs, but also CNC milling, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection molding. And with the link in the description, you will get $5 off your first order. And that's on top of the current Christmas sales, which run until December 31. Now let's start to build the riser. I printed all these parts in the last 4 days. I needed about 3 kg of filament for the basic model alone and another 2 kg for all the extensions. I printed not all, but most of them. And now I can finally assemble it, yay! If you don't want to watch this, you can skip it. I added some chapters in the timeline. I printed most of it from PETG, some parts from PLA, some from ABS and a few from PCTG. For the most part it doesn't really matter, but I would suggest building the base from a somewhat heat resistant material, depending on how hot you run your build chamber. This is why I printed all these parts, which have direct contact with the build chamber from PETG. We start by connecting these bigger parts, this is the left rear side and then the other side as well. And then these two sides can be slid into each other, slapped into each other, or smashed into each other, whatever works best for you. These are two build plate holders, and they slide in easy. And these knobs can hold the glass plate, just stick them in. This part is the slider for the air vents, they go in there, with the flat side facing downwards. To secure the top even more, not that it is necessary, um, there are these four nails. Some just go in like that, others need a little more convincing. Turn it around. This little knob with the threads is for the air vent slider. Same on the other side, but here I have to use pliers to get it in. And for the drawers, there are two of these end stops. They are a bit finicky to get them in the right place. Should look something like this. On the front go these two pieces with the third ventilation slider. That goes there and you use these two pins to connect the two sides. Then a thread in knob again. Great, that works. And then there are four more pins to connect the front to the rest of the riser. So here's a tip that I wish I had known before I assembled everything. You could print the sliders a little thicker so that even less warm air can escape. To do this I would simply stretch the part a little in the sect axis in the slicer. That way you can find the sweet spot, where it is still movable, but more airtight than mine are. They are not bad, but in hindsight, I would do that. Oh, and uh, do the same on the knobs, so the threads go easy in. To lock the front in place, you need three of these connectors. They go there, 
And for the drawers, we have these two front pieces with these knobs and they can just be pressed in. If your printer is like mine and sometimes shakes a lot, you will need these four limiters to keep the AMS in place. Then the drawer. I really like it that there is some Gridfinity integrated. And this is the front piece. You install it with this notch up. Let's push that in. So I guess I have to print some Gridfinity stuff later. So I wrote to Darren, who designed this riser, to ask if he could do something special for my viewers. And he came up with the idea of designing this Gridfinity drawer insert, which you can download for free using the code DEB2026. Very nice, that's it for the drawers. And on the left and right side, you have these inserts. They go there, three on each side. Base model complete. Now let's add some LEDs. I chose this one, it's 2 meter long and powered by USB. And it has an on-off switch. I tried to find one with a long cable, which this has, but as you will see later, I still had to extend this. For my printer, 2 meter of LEDs are a bit too much, but you can cut them in these spots. And on the other side is an adhesive, which for the installation can be a blessing and a curse. But I have a nice trick for you. Turn the riser upside down, the LEDs go all around and there is the hole to insert them. Getting them in is not the difficult part. On some points they will stuck a bit, so you have to massage them in all the way around. And this is how much was left. Now comes that part that is normally a real pain in the ass. But I have a trick for you. All you need is some yarn. I fiddle it in, in the same direction as the LED strip runs. At the end, I tie the string to the non-sticky side that I want to peel off. Like this. Then, with a little finesse, you can pull on the string. It works. And stick the LEDs on, step by step. You do this all around, one side after the other. And this allows you to control relatively well how you place the light strip. A quick check if it works. That looks amazing. You want to install the whole thing when the printer is not running. I did it anyway because I'm impatient. So here we are. The excess amount of the LED strip I did not cut off, but attached it to the back of the riser. The power switch gets some adhesive too, and I attach it next to the power switch of the printer. Now I have to put this somewhere, and while I'm back here, I'm getting reminded that I have to build some kind of poop bucket. Maybe in the next video. For the charging brick, you can use a cheap one, not much power needed, but you might need an extension like this. I will put you some links in the description for everything you see here. That goes there, extension cable in, ignition, light, lovely. In the chamber, it looks like this. The P2S already have a quite good chamber lighting compared to other models that will benefit even more from this upgrade. But as you can see, it helps here too. One of the main reasons why I chose this riser is the wide range of accessories available. These vary slightly depending on the specific printer model you have. The first and smallest accessory I printed is this foldable lever for the top cover. It gets installed where the original knob is, so you have to use an Allen key to loosen these two screws. Then you push that in there and reassemble it. The two parts of this lever are print in place and what it does is you can flip it up and create a gap between the glass plate and the riser for even more airflow than with the sliders alone. At this point one more thing worth mentioning is that with such risers the PTFE tube installed on the AMS may be too short. In my case it still works, but the bending angles are too tight for my liking. So I ordered some additional PTFE tubes. The next accessory is this AMS extension shelf. Printed from PLA and comes with these two pins to secure it. This is meant for if you want to have multiple AMS on the printer. There are different types of pins. I like these ones best because they provide a better grip if you want to remove them again. And for sure I need this externally mounted tool tray thing because I prefer to have my tools shaken in the rhythm of the printer. No, seriously, it's not that bad. There are two adapters that can be inserted into the side openings and the toolbox can then simply be attached, attached to them. Attached to them. There we go. Then another shelf. This one is side mounted and it goes to the right side on my printer, but there is also an option for the left side. And um, this is a bit finicky to get it in, because the external filament holder is in the way. It is meant for to mount the AMS-HT there. If my AMS-HT ever arrives, 
but you will see what this shelf instead can be used for shortly. Oh right, then I had this problem that the side brackets at the top were too thick. They should be thin like this on the left side. So I wrote to Darren, who designed this riser, and he immediately uploaded a modified design that solves the problem and replaces the faulty design. That's really great. Just to say, I don't know him, I paid the full price and I'm happy with what I got for it. Almost forgot to show you that the glass plate can be stored up here. And above is space for two print plates. One more shelf, let's make this quick. Comes with pins, I like this one better. Attaches to the top, fits an AMS HT. For me it's storage space. Oh, and here I realized that I printed the wrong side. This is how it should look. It reminds me a little of those Japanese temples. Anyway, I like that. On this side I put 4 kg of filament to see if it holds up and it does. On the right side some random chunk. This is a filament clip to secure the filament on the spool and it's the only one I've been satisfied with so far. Links in the description as always. And now we come to the star of the show, at least for me. With this external spool holder we can feed filaments from above and should be able to print TPU with it. Let's give it a try. We get rid of the glass plate. This goes there, that can be removed to attach the spool and that allows you to print TPU that would be too soft for the PTFE tubes, as well as very brittle filaments. And what a coincidence that this shelf holds the spool holder perfectly when not in use. You are supposed to buy two bearings for this. I treat printed these and you know where to find them it's in the description not perfect but works for me this here is the first time i'm printing a very soft tpu on this printer and that went very well i will probably make a separate video about tpu with all the tips and tricks but since it was requested many times in the comments on the last video i will briefly explain the most important things so that you can get started right away First make sure that the PTFE tube you have unplugged is not being eaten by the fan. After I inserted it into this slot it worked, but I'm sure there will be a better solution for this in the future. To guide the filament into the extruder I cut a short piece of PTFE tube, then shove it in there. And I changed all the speed settings on the filament to 50 to 60 mm per second. And my printer makes this sound when it's done cooking. And on today's menu we have an extra soft TPU with a shore hardness of 30D. Mm, okay, that's good. My best tip to easily remove it from the print plate oh, yes. is to spray it with alcohol. Then it can usually be removed by gently lifting it with a scraper. Do not cut it, just slide the scraper underneath it and let the alcohol do its work. And as a bonus you also get a clean print plate. I think it looks very good. Here on the top layer there is some leftover isopropyl alcohol, maybe just a little bit under extrusion that I have to adjust and some occasional blobs. I like to use these clippers for that, but also fingernails will work. So I'm already very happy with this setup printing TPU. It seems to work well and I printed the remaining parts I needed in one go. Um, where is the music? Oh yeah. That will be a gasket for the riser I designed myself so that the glass plate sits flush on top and less heat is lost there. I guess my design only fits the P2S. I will upload it to Thingiverse and you can download it. This is the exact filament that I used, Fiberflex 30D. I had a few problems with it in the past, but drying it solved that. So again, a filament that I store in these bags. In the last video I was often asked about these and the vacuum this pump. This here is an automatic pump. These usually work, but sometimes they start to leak after a while. With these bags it is important to squeeze the air valve with your fingers after deflating so that it is closed. And I fold the ziplock so that it lies flat and the whole thing is round and nice. That works, but if you have a solution that is more reliable, please let me and the others know in the comments. Back to the gasket. It consists of five pieces. I laid it down first to see if there are any gaps. The main problem is that the spool holder has to fit exactly on the middle part there. As you can see it won't fit as well if the gasket would be underneath. Decide yourself whether you want to simply insert the part or glue it in place. With TPU I always make sure to use a glue that remains elastic after drying. Cannot read that, but it works. However, because it dries very quickly I have to apply a larger amount so that it isn't already dry before I have placed it. With all the parts in place I close the lid and let it dry for a moment. 
And for that last piece, decide yourself if you want to glue it in. In the end, I did it. I think it's still stable enough. I hope so. But maybe you want to print the gasket a little thinner than 1mm as a compromise. And here is my conclusion on the 3D P riser. In short, this model has everything I could ever want in a riser. It is practical to use and looks cool has additional lightning, plenty of easy accessible storage, offers better and adjustable ventilation and mounts for additional print plates and the glass plate. AMS rised for access from above, allowing you to print TPU and other filaments that cannot run through the AMS. With all these add-ons, the printer can be customized exactly to your needs. All this for 10 bucks, which I was happy to pay for this complete package. As I already said, I don't earn anything from it. I only know Darren through the messaging function on Maker World, where I found the model and at some point informed him that I will make a video about it because I like what he designed. If you want to choose a free riser instead, just go for it. There are a lot of options. For example, I would look at the AMS Riser V2 or for the P2S, the AMS Riser V3, which are similar in design. These also come with add-ons. Perhaps not all as refined as on the 3D P riser. Not sure, I did only print this riser here. For me, the selling point for the 3D P riser was the ability to print TPU from above by the spool holder, which works great. So which riser will you choose? Also, let me and the others know about your tips and thoughts on the topic of risers down in the comments. And the next time we'll have some fun with Desican. Oh great, now it's everywhere. So never throw these little packs away. We'll take a look at which ones you can reuse, which ones you can't, and how we can use them to upgrade the sh** out of our AMS or other multi-material system. Feel free to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. That really helps my small channel grow and if you liked this video, every thumbs up is much appreciated. Thanks for watching and we'll see okay. us in the no. next one. Better. Whew. Oh, this video here is great. Or maybe watch this here first. You want it? Come on, click it. Bye bye. Just click on it already.